with October's second cold front upon them, my friends head to their stands with renewed anticipation. We have learned to build our entire pre-rut strategies around the passing of these gifts from the north. John starts the action with a morning hunt the day the front rolls through, hoping to catch one of his many solid shooters moving in daylight. Mike and I have finally made it into the stand. This is a spot that we have never hunted before, and this is actually the first morning that we've hunted this year, so it's definitely a good morning. It's the coldest morning of the year so far. We got temperatures in the 30s, high 30s, and um, that pressure's slowly rising. And like Eric said, he killed a buck last night. Is That's something that we're really looking for in these early season hunts is the perfect weather conditions. But where we are today is actually a poor man plot that uh, Zach and I put in. It's a perfect stopping point for these bucks. They come from the fields and work towards bedding, and this is right on their way to working into this river bottom ground. And it's just one of those foolproof spots. It's, we got northwest wind, we're blowing it right over this creek, so nothing can get downwind of us. But we're gonna sit tight here for a little while and uh, see what we see. Action should be good. We'll be getting a lot of pictures in here. Mike and I are just finishing up our sit this morning. One of the bucks that we've been getting pictures of consistently throughout the year. Um, just a really nice, solid 10 point uh, mature deer. He came out 65 yards and he was just bumping does all over the place. Uh, we probably saw him four or five different times, anywhere from 65 to 100 yards away. Yesterday, we went from having highs near 70 degrees to today. I think the highs are around like 55, 56 degrees. So that change in temperature is pretty drastic and uh, definitely got deer on their feet this morning. So hopefully we'll be back in here in the next couple of weeks and have just as good of a sit, if not better. That afternoon, Aaron and Zach head to their best public land site while Luke Nissen makes a first hunt for a giant he has just started getting on camera during daylight. It's October 16th, and Aaron and I are back on the river unit. And we're actually at the stand that we came in and hung late summer. And what it is is an old road that runs north and south. And to the north of us, we've got a couple bean fields up there. We think these deer are going to be traveling up this road right up into that crop field this evening. We've got high pressure and a cold front coming through. So we're really excited about it. 
Got some fresh grapes below us. Cold front in October. Can't get much better than this. I always detach my fuse quiver once I get to the stand or blind, but some of the hunters in our group prefer to leave them on. Fuse quivers are easily detachable for guys like me, but they are light and lock solidly in place for those who prefer not to take them off. They also feature Fuse's stealth dampening system to reduce vibration. I shoot a fairly heavy draw weight on my bow, and when you do that you have to have a really smooth cam, otherwise it can be uh, almost too much to handle. The Hoyt Nitrum Z5 cam is super smooth, has a very solid back wall. The Hoyt Z5 is smooth enough that I can draw back and hold heavy draw weights comfortably. Time lapse mode is important when you're patterning bucks because it allows you to uh, put the camera on the corner of a food plot or the corner of a small feeding area and get pictures over a specified time period, maybe the last two hours of daylight. This allows you to, to get uh, a real good handle on where the deer are coming from as they enter the food plot. It gives you a real good feel for how to hunt it. The Muddy Pro Cam 12 has this time-lapse feature, which makes it a top choice for me when I'm patterning bucks. Well, it's the afternoon of October 16th here in Southern Iowa. Mike and I are pretty excited to be in the tree tonight, but the main reason we're in this spot is we're hunting a big old buck that we got quite a few years of history with. We're guessing this deer to be six and a half years old. Right over my right shoulder here across this cove is where we got a camera placed and where this buck is coming out of his bedding area. We checked that last Friday about noon in the middle of the day and believe it or not when we had a cold front come through on the very first day of season, October 1st, that buck came out about six o'clock in the evening. But it's a high pressure bluebird day, cold front rolled in last night. So Mike and I are all settled in the tree. Hopefully tonight, the cut beans, the big and beastie, and these bucks getting a little bit curious with does, we'll have the big nine coming out to see what's going on. Alright, well the sun just went down here and we've actually seen pretty good movement so far. Uh, there's an oak thicket back to the northwest of the stand and we've seen several does and even some small bucks pushing those does around back in that area. There's even been a couple bucks sparring back in that thicket. We know there's some good bucks back in this area based on our trail camera and we're really just hoping one of those gets up and moves before dark. Mike and I have had a pretty eventful night so far. The does have come out and fed on the cut beans, just like we thought they would. We got about 45 minutes left, and I would expect in the last 15, 20 minutes of light, that's when we might see a buck. We'll see how the rest of the night goes. Here comes a doe right now.
One of the main reasons that we use ground blinds in the first place, well, there's a number of reasons. I mean, odor control, where you're locking in your scent, staying away from the, the sight line of the deer, but also, you know, we'll admit that we love the comfort factor that comes from being in these blinds. Having a comfortable chair is a big part of that. The redneck chairs are perfect uh, from that standpoint. They're very comfortable, but they're also very functional. The seat spins, which allows you to pivot to get a shot out of any of the windows which allows you to hunt the blind uh, both comfortably and very effectively. To save money on tree stands for hunting public land, we use the Muddy Vantage stands and pack them in each time. They're lightweight and easy to set up and allow us to be flexible and keep up with changing gear patterns on public land. It can be really tough to figure out which tree stand to hunt when you've got light and variable winds. You hate to go into your best spots because you don't know when the wind is going to swirl or switch and kick your scent in the wrong direction. One of the precautions that we use when we hunt on these types of conditions is the ozonics unit. It eliminates enough of our human odor that even if the wind does swirl, we don't feel like we're spooking any deer. The Shark Dual Caliper release from Scott Archery is one of the most popular releases among our group of hunters. This release is highly adjustable. This is important because being able to adjust the length of the stem not only uh, lets you fine tune it for your hand size, but also allows you to pull the release up so that you can contact the trigger further into your index finger. This makes it a lot easier to produce a surprise release that results in the most accurate shooting. right on his belly line and I think he ducked right into it. It sounded solid. Door for that little buck. 
He'd have been back in the woods. I know the deer. He's a four or five year old. I got pictures of him last year, trail photos to him. And he disappeared on me this year. And I think we just got narrow him. Yeah. He's straight on the tree. He's just pumping. I think I see my light up there. He's up. There he is. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> Look at that white tail. Holy smokes. Oh, gosh. I can't believe it. I cannot believe that. I'm honestly in complete and utter shock right now. I figured tonight would be good, but I didn't think it'd end up like this. This is one heck of a deer, buck of a lifetime. But I think one of the most successful things that helped us on this hunt tonight, besides the weather and the high pressure and the moon, the combine just rolled through this bean field yesterday. We were sitting there in the stand tonight and noticed a lot of beans out on the ground. And that's what this deer came out to do and all the does that we saw tonight, they were out feeding on those beans, those shelled beans on the ground. You know, actually this is a deer we got pictures of last year as a four-year-old in the summer, we thought is what he was. He didn't change a whole heck of a lot. He lost his split here. He still got his split on his two here. But this is a deer we didn't see last year. We got pictures of him all summer long. You know, he just shows up out of nowhere. You know, that's, that's the magic of hunting in mid, late October and, and even into the rut. Some of them bucks that you just, you think they're gone, they just come out of nowhere, but man. What a mid-October night. This is one I'm never gonna forget. It's about two in the morning and Aaron and I went back, regrouped, got some more lights and uh, brought Mike along. So we think it's one lung and liver and no exit wound because the arrow stuck in him. And we had good blood and where we lost track of him when Aaron panned off of him, we think that he moved from that spot. Um, we're going to sneak back in there and see if we can find him um, before the coyotes do. It's the tiniest little bit. Son of a gun. It's just not playing the lock. Alright, well it's about a quarter till eight and uh, this is actually the third time that we're in here looking for this buck. Um, we tracked him for probably an hour and a half, but it was dark. We were losing batteries in our lights, and uh, we just decided we we're going to back out. We think it's a fatal hit, and uh, we came back in here with plenty of daylight. Let's see if third time's a charm. Yeah, he is, man. Literally threw us through a loop. I would like to see that arrow sticking up. A lot of blood here. Yeah, I'm gonna stand up and be ready to draw. Yeah. Sure, that's not bad. Dude. He's dead, man. I think he's dead right there. <laughs> that was one of the, the craziest track job I have ever been on. <laughs> and a giant bodied deer. We've been tracking this deer 
for so long and I'm super excited to get my hands on him finally. Well, we got him drug out so we can get a little bit better look at him. The tracking job on this buck was unbelievable. We spent probably 13 hours looking for this buck. The other part that made it tough was that this was only a single lung liver hit. And that just goes to show that you can never give up when you're not finding a lot of blood. We were only finding a drop or two here, a drop or two there, and then we would find a little bit more blood, but then it was just back to that drop. There was one point where he actually ran a full circle and went back the way that he was originally coming from, and it threw us through a loop. We were checking all over for blood, and finally Mike picked back up on it both times, actually, and uh, we were able to keep going after him. And after that, we got into some really nasty stuff, and <laughs> we were on our hands and knees crawling, finding single drops of dried blood, and we would go on our hands and knees for five, ten yards before we'd find another drop of blood. But we just kept after it, and sure enough, eventually, we got to the end of the trail, and there he was laying dead. But overall, it was a great hunt on public land, and if there's one thing to take away from this hunt, it's don't worry about the October lull. If you've got a cold front and high pressure, you need to be in a stand, because yesterday there were a lot of mature bucks on their feet, and it really paid off for us to be out there last night. But I'm really happy with this buck. It was a perfect ending to a great hunt. Luke was using a Realtor Easy Hanger on this hunt, and he had it placed straight in front of him in the direction that the action was most likely to come from. This allowed him to get the bow in his hand quickly with the least possible amount of movement. Broadcasting big and beastie into soybeans is the perfect way to get the most out of your food plots. You get the summertime attraction of the soybeans, plus you get the fall attraction of the big and beastie. The two work together perfectly, and this is one of the factors that led to Luke's success. Luke's been hunting this property for a couple of seasons and he originally picked this buck up the summer before on a Trophy Rock mineral lick. This is an important step that we take every year, establishing these mineral licks during the summer, uh, putting the trail cameras on them and getting a head start on where the bucks are located before going into the season. Sometimes you've got to go deep into public land to find mature bucks. The only problem is getting them out. We used our Cabela's Deluxe game cart in some rough terrain this season, and it stood up to the punishment. When the sun finally sets on October 16th, we know it is an instant classic. Everyone that hunted that day saw or shot mature bucks. Luke and Zach filled tags. Caleb Byers encountered a big shooter when returning for another try at Mini. Mike had an encounter with the buck he named Mr. Funky. And my own hopes were realized when my camera showed that Big Junior made his first daylight trip across the Big Bottom. Days like this don't come around very often. October cold fronts are like gold. You have to make the most of each one. Now starts the next round of preparation as those of us still carrying tags restart the quest. There is no telling what will happen next as we continue chasing November. <laughs>